The potential loss of income in the event of death or a disability is an important issue for most consumers. Life insurance takes care of the death and income needs and disability coverage can take care of the loss of income concerns. There are some minor but distinct differences in the definitions in DI contracts. When we look at own occupation versus any occupation disability income policies, notice how the definitions specify how a person is covered and how occupational and non-occupational contracts define when a person is covered as well. Disability income policies have elimination periods, which are a form of deductible. Like any deductible, it must be satisfied before any benefits are paid by the insurance company. Unlike medical deductibles, which require a specific dollar amount to be paid by the insured, elimination periods are a span of time that begin on the date of disability. For example, an insured with a 90-day elimination period will not receive benefits until day 91 of the disability. And just like any deductible, the bigger the deductible, the smaller the premium. Disability policies are subject to a number of limitations, including potential exclusions for pre-existing conditions. You may think that pre-existing condition exclusions are no longer allowed under the Affordable Care Act. And for most medical expense policies, that's true. However, disability income allows for the insurer to attach an exclusion for medical conditions that have occurred during a specific period of time before the application was submitted to the insurance company. We also looked at social insurance, like Social Security Disability Income, or SSDI, and how disability income will coordinate benefits payments so the insured person isn't overcompensated for the disability. Now, we're going to detail the different levels of disability and the differences between them and how they affect coverage payable under the contract. Depending on the policy, benefits may be available that can pay for partial disabilities, which occur when a person can perform some, but not all, of their job duties. If a person that was receiving disability benefits suffers a recurrence of the same disability, the recurrent disability provision could come into play and provide benefits to the insured. Also, most policies will cover residual disability benefits, which is a coverage that pays the insured for any residual effects from the disability. We'll discuss group disability and highlight the differences from individual policies, and there are some important ones. Group policies don't have the same type of underwriting that individual policies do. In most cases, those who enroll in a group plan won't have to worry about proving they're healthy enough to be insured. In a group setting, short and long-term disability policies can be dovetailed in order to provide a continuous income stream to the disabled group insured. Remember the business uses for disability insurance involve individual policies and not group contracts. These policies are largely ignored by the agent force but can be critically important when thinking about keeping a business afloat and operational if an owner or key person becomes seriously disabled. When we explore disability policies related to keeping the doors of a business open, we see there are many ways that you can protect your clients. What if a key person is seriously disabled? That could easily affect the bottom line profitability of the business, and most business owners don't think of policies that could prevent the businesses from shutting its doors in the event of a serious, long-term disability. We'll also introduce you to a few riders that may be added to disability income policies. Riders are supplemental pages attached to a policy for the purpose of altering coverage in some form. And as you progress through the course, you'll see numerous riders discussed.